<laughs> Hi, okay, let's talk about Docker. Um, so uh, the slides link is here in case you want to follow along. I do have some links at the end. I'll give just a second, HackMD, add aspect, rules OCI, uh, okay. Um, so uh, the point of this talk is that uh, Bazel does a lot of languages and if you are deploying to a server, chances are that you need to push your artifacts in some way and that way is containers. Containers are obviously um, very popular, Kubernetes, um, bare metal, like it's basically the way to ship uh, software and most of the Bazel users want to see these things in the Bazel output tree. Um, who am I? So uh, my co-founder and I, uh, Greg is right over there. Please come talk to us after. My name's Alex. Uh, we started Aspect a couple years ago to make Bazel work for everybody. Um, before that, I used to work at Google. Um, adjacent to Ulf, I was working on the continuous integration system at Google, um, the build result UI that's called Sponge. Anybody who's worked at Google will, will know these things. Um, we rolled out TypeScript and Angular to Google 3. Um, I like to say I'm unreasonably passionate about Bazel. Um, I hope that we all are. Um, I, I also, uh, uh, Greg and I have worked on rules Node.js forever. I was a maintainer of rules Python. We have our own rule sets. Um, importantly for this talk, I was a maintainer of rules Docker for a little while and tried to keep that thing going. Um, also, uh, Helen and Keith, who's not here, uh, and I started this rules author SIG, um, which I'll mention in a bit. Um, so this is the Bazel Central Registry. Here is the rule set I'm going to talk about today. You can see that it is already 1.0 except that it has like the RC0 on the end. So um, this slide was supposed to be about doing something to engage the audience, but I have an idea. So um, let's just go ahead and tag uh, V100, get push origin. Okay, that should make the talk more exciting in a few minutes. Okay. So. Now I'm going to tell a very brief story because um, I've always wanted to just uh, use my talks to do story time. So uh, Rules Docker, I never really worked on it while I was at Google, but I knew Matt Moore who was working on this project. He started the Google Container Registry, did a whole bunch of like super impressive and, and um, ambitious things at Google. And uh, from what I could see of Rules Docker's progress, it was like amazingly, it solved this whole problem for everybody, it became like a really important part of the ecosystem. And the scope just seemed to keep growing and it was impressive that he could manage all of this scope. And so I think the, the end of the story is that uh, without somebody like that um, at Google to sort of defend the project's resources and continue to make that scope viable to maintain, it just was like, got kind of impractical to fund it. Is the sense I got um, by that point I was outside, so. Um, this is not official. Official, this is just story time. Um, so to get a little bit more specific about what the maintenance problems look like from, from my point of view um, as, a, as a maintainer for a little while, um, there's a lot of technical debt in the way the project was put together. Um, there's, a, there's like the pusher and puller programs that are written in Go, but then they're downloaded as tool chains. They're not built as part of the release. They got really out of date. Um, there's an awesome contributor we've worked with who like was like factoring a way to build that into the repository rules so that it could be built on the fly and uh, it, it just never got, it was too big of a project for somebody who's a, a casual contributor. Um, similarly, the language specific rules, rules docker, if you look inside of there, kind of supports everything, although it's not, um, it's not 100% of the languages that you could use with Bazel, but it's way more than just the ones that are built into to Bazel itself. Um, that also brought like baggage of, um, for example, it'll depend on some older version of rules go and now somebody in their workspace file brings in rules docker and then explodes the world because now they have all these old versions of things they don't understand why. Um, so basically it got to the point where it's barely keeping the lights on. And I'm not trying to like incite a panic, you do not need to sell all of your shares of rules docker during this talk. Um, but it doesn't seem to me like it has a lot of a, a, a roadmap right now. So maybe some more people will show up to maintain it. Um, still possible. Um, so uh, let's do a quick, a quick hand raising. How many of you opened an issue on Rules Docker? How many of you have sent a pull request to Rules Docker? Okay, my experiment has failed. Anyway, um, from what I can tell, these didn't get, these didn't get a lot of answers. Um, and again, not to, not to point any blame at open source maintainers, uh, they are trying hard. Um, so so what, what happened to, 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 to get Rules OCI started? We made a couple of key observations about the fundamental problem. It was kind of like step back and think of like, why, why did it get so big and complicated? Um, so the fundamentally container images sound complicated, but it's just a tar of tars and there's a manifest file. 
Um, rules PKG already knows how to build TARs. Doesn't seem like anybody's waiting for a Bazel rule set to come along and do TAR files, right? Uh, manifests are simple text files. There's lots of easy ways that you all know how to create a text file in Bazel. Like that's also not a technical challenge. Um, the thing that was missing when rules Docker got started was an ecosystem of standalone tools that are not Bazel specific that know how to manipulate container images. Um, and so, for example, Crane is one that we're using underneath Rules OCI, but there's a bunch of others. The fact that these tools exist means you don't need to write any of that stuff either. All you need is a little Bazel tool chain that knows how to fetch that thing, run it inside of an action. Um, and so Rules OCI doesn't have to do much. Um, I should mention OCI is the Open Container Initiative, which is sort of encompasses Docker and also um, there's some other, other runtimes that are non-Docker. Docker went through some licensing changes, and so I think there are legitimate reasons people are using alternatives too. Um, so a couple of graphs to show, uh, as, as, you know, pictures are good for talks. Um, so on the left is rules Docker, which has about 19 and a half thousand lines of code um, in many languages, uh, all those little colorful boxes, but again, because it has language rules for everything. Rules OCI currently has about 5,000 lines of code. Um, here's what it looks like to use. So because we don't have language specific rules, we don't really care what the star underscore binary is over here. It could be a language that only exists at your company. Um, package tar already exists, we don't have to do that, so you're going to make a tar ball, that's, a, that's already a layer in Docker slash OCI terminology. So all we have to do is give you an OCI image rule that composes those layers, a push rule that can send things to the registry, and a pull rule that can bring things down from the registry. Um, that's basically all that's in there, um, and for most use cases that's all you need. Um, there is some other stuff to mention. So like there's an OCI standard. So our philosophy with rules OCI has just been to stick to that standard. Like whatever it says you can do, we should be able to do. If it doesn't know how to do it, we shouldn't be able to do it. So anything you can do with OCI, we should be able to create. Um, there is support for signing and attesting images for um, supply chain security. There are window, there's some support for Windows containers. So there's, there's a few things in here that aren't in rules Docker. Um, there's also the container structure test, which you might have used under rules Docker. It's now, it now lives separately, so it's its own registry. Sorry, its own module on the Bazel registry. Um, a bit of a roadmap. So the main thing that's missing right now that you can do in rules Docker is container run and commit layer, or container run and commit a couple of other things. Um, those tend to be big sources of non-determinism because you'll just call out to apt get and do whatever to build a container, and then inside of that container you kind of, it's not impossible to make it hermetic, but it's non-hermetic by default. Um, and um, it's also really not necessary. So uh, Ulf showed us a bunch of spawn strategies in his talk. He didn't mention the Docker one. It turns out Bazel already knows how to spawn an action inside of a container. So again, like Rules OCI doesn't have to do that. Um, it does require a couple of experimental flags, so you'll have to be a little bit brave. Um, this is uh, next steps, and it's not, not working yet. Um, but this is sort of the direction we would like to take, is to avoid falling into the same thing that Rules Docker did of making something that's too complicated for a very small community like ours to be able to support effectively. Um, so speaking of support and like when am I going to have that Docker thing I just showed you, uh, sorry, the Docker spawn strategy, um, let me point out that GitHub has declared that this month, we are in it right now, I mean if you're watching this talk live, um, is, is the maintainer month and so we're trying to thank and appreciate all of our open source maintainers um, and uh, apparently gather and share and celebrate. Um, so let's do that by funding Rules OCI. This is my, um, my pitch, like the top of Wikipedia. Um, Wikipedia does not exist without your contributions. Uh, so let me first of all thank the people who did fund it so far. So the Distroless team at Google wanted this because they built sort of the base images that lots of, lots of us use, like very popular on Google Cloud, I think. Um, so uh, we developed a, a sort of a minimum fe viable feature set for them, and then the rules author, Sig, uh, funded the remainder of this 1.0 release um, that should be out by now. And so um, that's, that's not enough to keep it going. Uh, there is an open collective um, that the Bazel rules author SIG runs, and since rules OCI is in the Bazel contrib org, it is owned by that group. Um, thank you to funders even here. Engflow is one of the funders of that, um, of, of that open collective. Of course, financial is not the only way. Um, it's a good way, for sure, especially if you have a large company, if there's an open source program office, they may already have a, a, a program of, of donating to open source that you can recommend to them that, hey, I use Bazel a lot, it seems like there's some projects over here that could use the help. But also just filing good issues, actionable issues, um, you know, minimal repros is always helpful, and answering questions that other people have posted is also really awesome. Um, there are some resources available if you want to do this migration. Again, I'm not saying that, like, you have to do this today, but... Um, over time, I think it's probably a good, uh, I would recommend this for most users. 
Um, so there's a migration guide on our website, um, docs.aspect.build. Um, uh, right, so let's just check on that audience engagement tactic. So if we look at rules OCI, there's a 1.0 release. Oh, it's only six minutes old. Maybe you should go try it right now. Um, I don't think it's on, it's probably not on the registry unless I got really lucky. This only publishes once an hour. <gasps> oh, look at that, demo magic. That never happens. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Or it's, I did mention in stand-up this morning that I was going to do this bit, so it's possible somebody was like watching and just pressed the button. Thank you, whoever you are. Really appreciate it. Um, okay, so uh, so that's it. Um, giant thank you to Shaheen from our team who did most of the coding on this and is the expert and uh, would love for you to direct all of your feedback to him within um, within limits. Um, there's my LinkedIn. Uh, I post a lot on our on blog.aspect.dev. Um, again, the the rules author Sig was a really important part of making this happen and. Um, Greg and I are looking forward to chatting with more of you uh, later today. Thank you.